Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Isaiah chapter 54, verses 10 and 17. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name above all names, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for another day of life that you have spared unto us. Dear Lord, right out the gate i want to ask you to keep us watchful in these times be careful to not be taken away with the snare and traps of the the devil with the cares of this life with the lust of the flesh with the desires and pride of life with the deceitfulness of riches dear lord keep us watchful never to be ensnared by these things but that we are conformed to the image of your dear Son, our Lord Jesus, and that we walk a walk pleasing unto you by doing your good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will. This is our prayer, now and forever, until that glorious day you do come and redeem us, and we shall be like you, perfected in all aspects of our being, being translated into that holy spiritual body that you shall give us, and that we shall be with you in your eternal kingdom to reign with you and be with you forever and ever and this is why dear lord um as the times do ramp up you have told us by your word that it shall come upon some as a snare because they weren't watchful and i pray that we are not found in this camp i pray that we are attentive to seek you every single day of our lives so that you are able to bring these things to rem to remembrance dear lord because it's easy to be taken away with the cares of this life but if we are abiding in you and you in us we know that you shall guide us in the way of truth in the way of peace in the way of righteousness so that this life of ours may be used this maximum time that you have given us may be used to glorify your name and to glorify you so dear Lord, I just want to pray that you help each and every one of us, keep us strong, keep us attentive and keep us sensitive to hear those instructions that you have given us and are giving us, that correction, that rebuke, so that we turn away from anything that is abominable, anything that is sinful, anything that is not according to your good acceptable will, that we turn away from these things and hold fast to you persevering and overcoming this world as you have taught us lord jesus help our brothers and sisters in the faith help each and every one of us who are going through persecution affliction grief sorrow and the like help us that we do not faint nor stumble nor fall but that we persevere and overcome help our children also and help us to help them to be grown up in the way of truth in the way of peace in the way of our lord jesus christ so when they are of age, they shall not depart from you. So I thank you. Lead us in spirit and in truth in your word this morning. Let every word that is spoken be spoken of you and not of ourselves and not of ourselves or myself, that we may be edified thereby. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Cool. So Isaiah 54 verse 10 says, For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, say, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. And verse seven says, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. So this heading in my Bible um, really, really gives a good um, idea of what this chapter is about. It says God's everlasting kindness. And if you read the whole chapter, which I do encourage everyone to do, we'll see that God is truly, truly kind to us, his people. Right. And um, we know that kindness is a characteristic of love and we know God is love. So it's just God showing his characteristics to us when he shows us his kindness. It says love is patient, love is kind, right? And it goes on 
to, to list the other characteristics of love. And um, yeah, this chapter is quite neat because it, it kind of shows how God kind of view us as people. Ultimately, this was written back in the Old Testament, so it would have been speaking about his people, Israel. But nevertheless, we know that through Christ, we are all his people through Christ, right? So even if we use it to refer just to his people, right, full stop, he considers his people as his wife, right? As it says there in verse 1. Yeah. Is it verse 1? Yeah. So, yeah. So, the Lord does consider. And if we even read in the New Testament also, we see where Christ calls his church his bride. Right? His bride because... His reason why I said is his bride because... There is wife according to beth betrothing and there's wife according to marriage, right? So when a man betrothed a woman, she's considered his wife, but the marriage has not yet been consummated, right? Like we can see um, an example with Mary and Joseph. We know Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph, the, the, the wife of husband, the husband of Mary, right? Before they came together, Mary was found with child, with Jesus, right? So... The scripture would have referred to Mary as Joseph's wife, but they weren't, they didn't consummate that marriage, right? So it was, yet still, she, she was betrothed to him, right? And um, ultimately, yeah, they did get married after Jesus um, was born. So the same like us now with Christ. Um, Jesus has betrothed us, right? He has uh, sanctified us and set us apart to be his wife, his bride. Right, but we know that that marriage is upon his return. He has gone away, but when he's coming back, he shall glorify us, translate us, and we shall be a part of the, the marriage of the Lamb, as it is said in the book of Revelation. So this is all showing the kindness of God. This is always this is showing you how kind and loving He is towards us, His people. Right, and it just shows you again in these verses that his his kindness would never depart from us. Those who he loves and those who love him, his kindness shall never depart from us, right? Neither shall his, his coven, the covenant of his peace be removed, right? And somebody might say, but what about the old covenant and the new covenant, right? You choose which one you're going to abide by, right? Christ already showed you that you could not live, you could not fulfill you in yourself could not fulfill the old covenant hence why christ have to come if you want to live by the old covenant then you would have to do all that is according to the law of the old covenant which is impossible for ever, anyone to do right of them their own self plain as day right hence why when the um the scripture talk about we are we, we die to ourselves because we, when we die to ourselves, we death is what breaks a covenant, right? Hence why Christ had to die for us to bring on the new covenant. So when we die to ourselves and we can be, um, we can accept and be a part of the new covenant of Christ Jesus who has sanctified us and has bought us with a price, right? So this is just showing you again that he has been so merciful and made every single way and way, everything possible through Christ for us to be redeemed and be with him forever and ever. And as the last verse says, there no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall be condemned. This is a heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The righteousness that we have is not of ourselves, it's of Christ Jesus and his covenant which he has given us is showing us his kindness, his new covenant which we have through the, the, the shedding of the blood of Christ, right? And as I said, nothing at all. When we are his, there is nothing at all that can come against us nor judge us because he has made us holy and acceptable unto himself and he shall keep us until that day when we are redeemed when we are with him, when we are um, a part of that marriage supper of the, the of the lamb, right? The bride and the wife of the lamb in that day to come. So yeah, just um, touch on the kindness of God here with, through Christ Jesus. Um, any questions, anything that you want to send in, send them into the word at eatreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me and taught me and kept me over the years, 
I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.